You're listening to The Secrets of Success. My name is Bill Horan. The show is produced at 90.3 WHPC at Nassau Community College. We'll be right back after this brief intermission. This portion of programming on WHPC is brought to you on behalf of the Nassau County Bar Association, who wants you to know about ADR, Alternate Dispute Resolution, which can help you avoid costly, lengthy, and uncertain litigation in court. By resolving disputes through mediation or arbitration, it gives you control over who decides your case. A mediator helps all parties to reach an agreement they can live with, or an arbitrator selected by the parties hears and decides the case. Your attorney can still represent you, but you control who decides your case. ADR is faster and less stressful than fighting in court and it is a great way to resolve divorce, employment, or commercial disputes. ADR is now offered through the Nassau County Bar Association. Find out more about how ADR can help resolve your dispute by calling 516-747-4070 or visit NassauBar.org. Welcome back. You're listening to The Secrets of Success. I'm your host, Bill Horan. And today we're speaking with Isaac Litsky, author of Eyes Wide Open. Isaac, um, you have a uh, saying in the book, and I always tell our audience, even if you're just doing one thing, take away one sentence, one idea from every show that we do. And I'd like you to talk about this. You say, when you take control, you break fear's spell. Tell us why that happens. Yeah, so, you know... Uh, as we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, in, 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 when we confront sort of fear of the unknown, we can, um, you know, fill our, our, our minds with uh, awfulizing psychologists call it, all these awful scenarios. And, you know, we make assumptions about uh, sort of how bad things are going to be in worst case scenario. And, and, and usually um, it's, you know, these sort of this awful world of our fear is, is born of our ignorance. Um, it's born of uh, our sort of lack of understanding or lack of information. Um, when we can um, recognize with with peace uh, and with certainty uh, that which we don't know, uh, when we can um, you know become okay with the fact uh, that we have uh, a lot to learn or that uh, we have to wait and see, um, and you know take control for really questioning uh, the the sort of scenarios we're presenting ourselves. Uh, that's when fear melts away. I know it because I've lived it uh, in my life uh, numerous times. Um, and all of us, you know, uh, my book, I should say, you know, it's not about blindness or, or even disability. You know, all of us confront fear in our lives uh, and challenges and, and have regrets and, and tough circumstances. Um, but, you know, I was blessed to see that uh, we're also, uh, you know, the masters of our realities. And, you know, whether we recognize it or not, whether we like it or not, uh, whether we want to admit it or not, you know, every moment we're here, uh, we're making choices. We're making choices about who we want to be. We're making choices about how to live our lives and how to spend our time. So I, I just uh, want to remind our audience, just the way you put that, when you take control, you break fear's spell. So someone out there is fearful about something. What's it going to be like once I graduate from college, if I get a divorce, if so-and-so passes away, if I get sick, et cetera? We all have problems in life. But when you take control of them and do everything you can to overcome it, and you've seen already what Isaac has done in his life, and here he is with a um, um, eye problem that started at birth and uh, has been with him uh, since he was born, actually, I guess, and yet you went on to Harvard, you have a law degree, you were working with a major law firm, and I mean, all of these things we would at first say, oh, that can't be, can't be, can't be, and yet you've done it, am I correct? Yeah, I've been blessed to do a lot of really cool things in my life. Uh, I clerked, you know, clerked for a couple of Supreme Court justices and um, turned around a struggling construction business into a Well, you know, uh, wait a minute. Larger. You just throw that out there like saying, oh, I pitched a no-hitter for the Yankees and I won a Super Bowl. Ah. <laughs> uh, to say that you clerked for a couple of Supreme Court justices, uh, th that's honestly like the, about the same odds of winning a lotto ticket, isn't it? Yes. Uh, you know, at the core of... Um, of, of sort of living and leaning eyes wide open is, is really being sort of brutally honest with yourself, aware uh, and honest and transparent with yourself about what's important to you, what do you value, um, what do you want to be doing. And, and uh, I, you know, kind of put my money where my mouth is. And so it's, it's, I've been blessed at several points along the way in my life. I've, I've pursued uh, great uh, challenges or aspirations that, um, you know, seemed 
um, you know, the right thing for me to be doing, you know, at the time. And, and, uh, you know, so law was great. It's a great example of that. And then I found myself working for a big law firm, as you mentioned, and, uh, really wasn't very happy practicing law. And so, uh, you know, moved on and, um, with my college roommate bought a, you know, sort of small and humble construction company in Orlando and, spent the last six years sort of turning that business around and growing it with a team of remarkable people. And, um, yeah, it's this, it's the sort of liberating and empowering, uh, life we can live when we, as you were saying earlier, break fear spell when we, uh, when we take control of, uh, of our reality. I'm glad I read the book ahead of time because I would say very nicely to you that you are much too modest and I'm going to tell our audience why in a few seconds. But before I do that, I just want to let them know that if you just tuned in, the book is Eyes Wide Open. Write that title down, Eyes Wide Open. It's by our guest, Isaac Litsky, L-I-D-S-K-Y. And if you want an enjoyable read that's going to make you a lot smarter and put you way far ahead on that tra- on the pathway to success, please do yourself a favor and get this book. It's just not about Isaac's journey. You're going to see some lessons in there, and we're going to talk about them next because I really want to know a few answers. But Isaac, tell us where we can get the book and give us a website we can go to. Sure. So the book's available everywhere, Amazon, uh, you know, dot com and Barnes and Noble dot com and all sort of all sort of physical retailers. If you want more information on the book, you can go to my website, Lidsky dot com. L is in Larry, I, D is in David, S is in Sam, K Y dot com. And I have a blog there and I did a TED talk, which you can check out uh, on my website as well. And so uh, most importantly, if you do check out my website and read the book, I, I want to know what you think. So please do. Let me know. Go to the website and give me your feedback. I'll let you know right now. I think you better write volume two, and it better <laughs> also be an audio audio book so it's easy on a lot of us as we're driving around. We can listen to it quicker if we're not uh, sure. readers. But now, now's the part where I'm going to say to you, I, if you had asked me some of these things beforehand, I would say you're nuts, okay? So I'm going to start telling our audience why. Here you are, Harvard-educated, Supreme Court uh, 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 work, uh, working with the clerk, judge, yep. clerk, I'm sorry, I couldn't f- remember that word, working with the judge in a clerk position, which is an extremely high position in the world. And on top of that, you did something called a trip ski, right? Yes. <laughs> Explain to us what that is. So uh, my, my wife and I set out to have a child, uh, and she naturally conceived uh, triplets. Um, who we call the Tripskis, our last name being Lutsky. And now I should say they have a, a, a younger sister, a baby sister. So collectively, they're the Kidskis. <laughs> so now here we are. You're Harvard educated. You're a lawyer working for a major firm, which usually likes to have you around there about two or 3,000 hours a week, which for yeah, anybody, that, that that's, uh, breaks down to about a 12-hour day, six days a week. But you get a few minutes a day to see the children or a picture or whatever. And... Then you decided that's not for you. Now, here you are, this golden career that most people would die for or perhaps, you know, murder the guy ahead of them or the woman ahead of them. And you actually research like thousands of businesses. Am I correct? Did I read that correctly? Yes. So I, you know, again, uh, you know, really forced myself to, you know, to, to acknowledge what was important to me, what I valued, what I wanted to be doing. And it wasn't. It wasn't, uh, you know, continuing on that sort of partner track at the law firm. So, but this uh, is neat. I mean, you you do get a holiday. You get paid medical, right? You had a good income. <laughs> yeah, I know. I look. It has a lot to commend it, and there are people who enjoy it uh, and find meaning doing it, and that's great for them. Um, yeah, I have no, you know, I have no problem with it. The, the problem is, I I didn't, um, you know, I didn't enjoy it, and I didn't find it terribly meaningful, for, you know, for me, my world too. Uh, and so I decided that, uh, it might make sense to buy a small business and, you know, move my family from Manhattan to Orlando, Florida, where, yeah, as you said, after sort of, you know, spending four or five months looking at, you know, thousands of different businesses around the country, you know, cursory look at the financials. And actually we did a pretty deep, you know, pretty, pretty deep dive on four or five companies and, um, ultimately settled on this one in Orlando, uh, uh you know, small residential construction subcontractor. And so, you know, wait, 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 wait. Uh, again, you go past these monumental things. <laughs> Orlando sounds good. I like warm weather. But yes. what kind of business did, after you looked at thousands of them, which one did you c- come up with? So, <laughs> um, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we bought a, um, 
residential construction um, subcontractor, a company that built sort of the, the, the structures of new homes for, and for home building. Now, structures of new homes. And do I recall you bought this at a certain time in history? Yes. Yeah, so we exactly right. Please so, tell our audience when you bought this. Right. So, you know, um, we, I bought the business in uh, uh, first quarter of 2011. So you know, the economy was in a state of misery. And you know, that's and a nice had, way, yes. And that, misery is a nice word, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you had, you know, industries that were at, uh, you know, what appeared to be once-in-a-lifetime lows, Con- you know, residential construction being one of them. Um, so, you know, the thesis was, no matter how badly I messed it up, you know, at least our timing would be would be good. So, um, <laughs> That's a unique thesis. I'm reading that, and I'm saying, oh, my gosh, here I like this guy. He looks – everything is going so great. And he bought a construction business after looking at thousands of businesses. And at the beginning of the or right in the heart of the recession, when people are being foreclosed out of houses, much less building new ones. Yes. <laughs> but, Many people thought I was crazy. But the, it, it, as I did, as I read that. But uh, <laughs> how are you doing today? So, the, you know, it was not, it was not a smooth ride. You talk, I talk a lot about the business in the book and sort of the lessons I gained in the experience. So not, we, we, we came to the brink of a uh, complete, uh, you know, bankruptcy and, and all that uh, along the way, but, but blessed to work with a phenomenal team. And, and, uh, and the net result is now six years later, the company is uh, more than 10 times uh, the size it was and it's uh, profitable and thriving. And it's, it has exceeded my wildest, uh, you know, your dreams or, or aspirations for the business. Isaac, my team. I have to say, your life in reading this book is like a roller coaster. Uh, you do something that I thought was absolutely crazy, and then now you've expanded the business ten times, and it's a booming success. So uh, the good guy wins, I guess. We're running out of time today, but I have to tell you, it's been a delight talking to you. I want our audience to please go out and take a look at this book, Eyes Wide Open, by our guest Isaac Litsky. And Isaac, the website again, real quick. Lidsky.com, L-I-D-S-K-Y.com. Thanks so much for being with us, and I'm waiting for Volume 2. <laughs> Thank you. You've been listening to The Secrets of Success on WHPC 90.3. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we'll continue our journey to success.